Okay, so welcome back to the channel guys. My name is Nick Armenis and in today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you about installing Google Analytics 4 on your Shopify store. In this guide, I'm gonna show you the easiest way to get Google Analytics installed on your Shopify store, but I will take you through several methods that might be better suited to you. The methods I'll show you will track the purchases and the actual value of those purchases. So you'll be able to use this as your method of conversion tracking in Google Ads, should you choose to. Now, one note of caution here for a lot of you. If you are switching and changing uh, your conversion tracking, it's gonna cause some big issues with your Google Ads. So you wanna do it slowly if you're gonna change events, or you need to determine, do I actually need to change? And if you're using Universal Analytics, yes, you are going to need to change, but if you're using another method, either through Tag Manager or through the Google conversion tag, you actually don't need to. If you already have that there, then I suggest actually just sticking with it. Still set this up, but maybe don't import it to your conversions. Or if you do, set it up as a secondary event until you collect some more data. So the first step, guys, is you're gonna need a Google Analytics 4 property. Most of you will have been prompted, prompted to create one at this point. If you don't have one, go into Google Analytics, create one or don't have one, you can go into your settings here in admin, create property, or follow, if you've got the Universal Analytics account, follow the assistant, which will help you transition across. It will help you copy a lot of the audiences and stuff like that that you have. If you already have it, as I said, that's my step two, use the transfer upgrade. A lot of you probably have already done this step, which is why I'm not going into this detail. I'm just gonna show you mainly the installation process, okay? So the first step is, for most of you, you will have this Google sales channel here. If you have this Google sales channel, you go to this section here and click get started. If you do not have this sales channel, click sales channels here and add the Google sales channel. You will need to go through the, all the process of getting all this set up. I'm not gonna take you through that right now, but in this step here, you're gonna click get started. And I'm gonna blur this out because I've got several accounts linked up to here, but you're gonna want to connect, you're going to want to connect a Google Analytics property, select the correct one here, make sure it's the right one, and then click connect. This is now gonna set up a link between your Shopify store and Google Analytics, okay? This is actually done now. This is all set up, ready to go. So let's head back over here. But what I'm going to do is, we've just done step three. I'm gonna cover off a few options for you because personally, quite often the Google sales channel app is clunky, particularly with new features. This hasn't been rigorously, rigorously tested. Uh, I've not seen it be 100% accurate for a lot of clients. Uh, and in particular, I've found some cool apps that I found just did a much better job and were much easier. The first one is, you now if you wanna find these, go to the Shopify app store. I just type Google Analytics 4. There is a lot of things and apps here ready to go. Two that I found that were quite easy were Fueled Google Analytics and Passalobus Google Analytics. Both of these were doing a very good job of tracking across several accounts. I do find that um, they didn't miss a beat. The values were always accurate at this point up until this day. So I really enjoyed it, particularly fueled Google Analytics. I found that that app worked really, really well. So I mean, to install it, you just click add app. We'll now install the app. So you first need to enable client-side event tracking, okay? So we need to click this link here. It's all quite easy, you follow the steps through this. We're just gonna approve this in our theme. Cool, so this is on. Just click save. Make sure you've got enable fueled events tracking. And that's all good, done there. So, require user tracking consent. So for those of you that are worried about privacy concerns, just make sure that this is active and it will enable everything that needs to be. So now we need the server side event tracking. This is already activated. If it isn't, just click activate. I've used it on this um, store before, so that's why it's potentially coming up. Uh, configure the order value. So determine whether you want the full price or the subtotal. Some people prefer to track on a subtotal basis because you know it excludes duties, taxes, tips, and stuff like that. Um, I've been using total price, but that's because we don't have tips in Australia. Taxes are inbuilt into the price, but to determine a really accurate return on uh, ad spend, you wanna use the subtotal. 
but it'll never marry up to what you've got in Shopify. So it really comes down to, do you want it to be matching or are you okay with the subtotal? So for most people, subtotal is gonna be the correct one. It just comes down to whatever you're gonna do, guys. Click save. Now, you need the measurement ID here. Again, this is already um, here because I've done this before, but to find this, go into your admin, go into your data streams, click here and grab your measurement ID here. You can click copy there and we just put it in here. Now the API key is another section that you need here. This will show you how to find it. It'll actually is a really good guide to a guide as to how to set this up as well. If you want to know where this is, you come down here, you go to measurement protocol API secrets, you click create and you just want to name this whatever I've created one already, so we'll just go GA4 event, GA4, Shopify, click create. And you will grab this, click copy, and paste it in here. If you have any issues, please follow that guide above, click save. Once you have configured the event and Google Analytics 4 settings above, events will flow into GA4 in real time. If you ever need to deactivate, you just press that. Otherwise guys, you're going to see, if we come into here, how this app, I've tried it with both, so some of the events are a bit all over the shop, but you can see revenues tracking now. You can put, so let's go e-commerce, we can go add to baskets, it's tracking everything. We can go conversions, right? So we can see our add to baskets, we can see our revenue, we can see Transactions is probably a better one, which is the same because that's what we've got. Quantity. There's so many things we can actually look at in here. Checkouts. And there you go, guys. You can actually see what is happening in your store. Um, there's plenty of reporting in here. I will do some more videos on Google Analytics 4 for you. Um, and in here, you can actually have a look at how your traffic's coming through. Um, engagement, all this sort of stuff within here and play around with where, play around with all of this guys. So one section that I like in Google Analytics guys, now that you've got things tracking is come into monetization, e-commerce purchases, and this will give you um, which items are being added to cart, which items are being viewed, items added to cart versus purchase, which ones are giving revenue, just lots of data that you can drill into to improve your Shopify store. Now heading back to the spreadsheet, the next step, now we've got this set up, check that it's working. This actually may take some time, okay? So it may take some time to flow through, but what we need to do is we need to make sure in our admin, we need to make sure that we've linked our Google ad account. So we need to go to Google ads here and then click link and link your Google ad account, okay? From here, we wanna import the purchase event into Google Analytics. Again, all of these things are gonna take some time. So if you've just done this, it's probably not gonna be flowing through correctly yet. Uh, it may take some time, but I'm gonna head into Google Ads and uh, I'll see you in there. Now, once you're in your Google Ad account, guys, we wanna to go to Tools and Settings and then Conversions. You can also check that the link has gone through as well here, if you like. And what we're going to do is we want to add a new conversion action. We wanna import, and we wanna import from Google Analytics for properties. And we wanna go web, we wanna click continue. And the event's gonna take some time, but here is where it's going to appear. Now in this particular store, I've actually already imported it. You'll see it there if you have. So to create the event, we click new conversion action, we click import, we click Google Analytics for properties, then web, then click continue. It's gonna take about a day to appear here. I've actually already done it in this particular store. I should have chosen another one, but I'll go back and show you how to then make sure it's set up and working correctly. What I've done here is guys, this is the event here. So I've, cat I've categorized it as a secondary event because transactions here, I might actually just go seven days. I still don't think it's gonna marry up 100%, but look, it's pretty close. Um, I think there might have been a day overlap or, or whatever. The actual value is fairly close here. 
uh, secondary event because I don't want it to. I don't want to switch over to this yet because I know it's going to impact my performance max and other automated bidding strategies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this collect data for at least a month, probably until I get sunsetted, and then I'm going to switch over and make this primary and the old transactions into secondary. I hope that makes sense. But in here, the event, you just want to make sure that it matches your old one. Um, and then data driven is just what's recommended these days. You can choose whatever attribution model you want, but that there should be good to go. You could just push the button and transfer across and just do it. It's not my preference, but this is why I'm saying transition that event slowly and then just take your time with it and then check it again. Check it. Step 10 is going to be check, check, check. Okay. This is very important. This conversion tracking, make sure it's working. And guys, I hope that you've enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. I'll do lots more on this. This is just a quick one for those of you that want to quickly get this up and running. I'll do a more detailed one and I'll see you in the next video.